music is history. Music tells you about a moment in time. The night we walk for hours downtown in his prime. The city seemed to sparkle when it was our time. The old apartment six flats that we had to climb. So many hard luck stories when it was our time. There's the old bookshop where we used to meet. That's a burned out theater on 14th Street where we passed the day when there was no heat. When it Oh, it's actually funny. I didn't choose Blicker Bob's. Blicker Bob chose me. <laughs> uh, when I first started here, every night, every day shift, every night, you would be busy running back and forward here, basically making sales at the register, left, right, and center. It used to be really good. Really, really good. Unfortunately, now it's, what, it's ten past nine, and what have we got? One person in the store, uh, but a lot of people are downloading, I guess. All home downloading and not buying any records or CDs. Uh, looks like I probably will be closing early tonight. I won't tell you what we made, but... <laughs> yeah, I'll be closing early tonight. <laughs> My name is Chris Widener. I've been working for Bob starting sometime in the mid-70s since I had been involved in music in college with the radio station. I went in and inquired and was given a short test to see what I knew and I got a job working there. Uh, well, what if I, we're, it's true that there is, we have no email on that account, that address, and I want to cancel it today. You understand? I don't want to pay for something I don't use. Okay, so it won't be on our next credit card bill. Thank you. I've been working for Bleaker Bob's for about... 12 years now. Uh, as a customer, longer than that, since 1977. Well, Bob's was the first place to carry punk music, new wave, heavy metal, hardcore music. He was the first one to actually, you know, handle this music because nobody else dared to handle this type of music. You know, and Bob was smart. He foresaw what, what was coming. He said, oh, this, this is going to be big. And every band that it's legendary in this city sold their demos here, and the records were sold here first before anybody, anybody else. Us still being there is a testament to the fact that some things are just never going to die. You know, on vinyl, the feel of the record, the sound of the record, um, and I think also where you go to get it is also part of that connection, you know. And when you come into Bob's store, you're at a place that really has been true to what it originally started out as. Uh, hi, I'm Broadway Al Tromas. I, I met a bleak of Bob. It was somewhere around the late, uh, like late 59 or 1960. I met him through a record store called Times Square Records. And then we just started hanging out in clubs, you know, here and there. We started... Uh, thinking about opening up a record store. And in the meantime, uh, his, his uh, parents' goal was to send him to uh, Fordham Law School. That actually happened. Uh, I even went to his graduation. He successfully graduated. After that, we started looking for a store. And uh, we came down, and we met in front of 149 Bleecker Street. And we knew it was a great location. We didn't like the idea that it was upstairs, but we figured we would take a shot at it. 
I think the location also back in the day, that area, the village, was a very artistic like spot. You know, like, and I'm trying to imagine too because I don't know. Like, I didn't shop there when like Led Zeppelin was there or Bowie would come in or, you know, and I think it was just the whole vibe of that neighborhood. Now we opened up in September of 1967. It was instant business. I said, Bob, we got to get a nickname for you because Robert Platnick does not sound, you know, like a hip name for a hip record store. I said, I got a good idea. I said, since we're on Bleecker Street, why don't we call you Bleecker Bob? And it stuck. <laughs> and that's the truth. <laughs> I think what he likes so much about film, you know, photography, is that I think he he was always around people that were so interesting. This is uh, Robert Plant, which I'm cracking up because, I mean, what a head of hair. Here's Robert Plant and Jimmy Page <laughs> in the store. I mean, like, you know, that's great. I would think back in the day it would be hard to get a pass and shoot Mick Jagger this close, I guess. <laughs> but he did. <laughs> and now see, here's what's her name, but I don't know if he took this, but I guess he did. Joni Mitchell. Um, this one here is great. This is a Polaroid, which Bob did a lot of Polaroids, of uh, him and Frank Zappa. And I don't know how old he was, but he was cute. <laughs> oh, and then this is Bob. This, I thought that one was cool. Bob with Debbie Harry and some other chick. But I'm not quite sure who she... I know, look at Bob. He's so funny. So pretty, Debbie Harry. I'm not sure who the girl is, but um, she looks Jewish to me, and I'm sure Bob is trying to impress her. Oh, here, this is what's his name from The Clash. I don't know, it's kind of like, it wasn't like, you know, like, oh, The Clash is in the store, you know, Bowie is in the store. It was just like, yeah, I know them. I think Bob actually probably was a little more famous than they were, <laughs> just for his, like, attitude and, and... I think Bob has a very deep presence. It's almost like he is a little bit of a star in a weird way, like a New York star where people want to be around you. People want to, you want to be able to say, you know, oh, I'm not just a customer, but, you know, Bob's my friend. So the store is obviously a New York institution, and I would venture to say it is probably the longest continuously running record store that ever existed in New York City. I can't think of anybody else who's been open longer. So hopefully we'll still keep it open. That's the plan. You actually found stuff. I found stuff. Well, I'm going through everything before you close. <laughs> I hope you do open somewhere else. I, to... I mean, it's really just a matter of finding the right spot. There are places out there. It's just, you know, going to be the luck of the draw whether we find one within the time limit that we're looking for. But right now it looks pretty good. Night. I don't know what we're going to do with a lot of this junk. When is the last day that we don't know yet? Okay. I, we, were, we were originally supposed to be out at the end of the month. Now that's all up in the air. We might get another month. I don't know. No, I hope greed loses. Yeah. It's just to the point now where it doesn't make any sense to stay here. We can't really generate enough extra income to really make it worthwhile. Uh, the whole the whole village is changing, but especially you know this neck of the woods, things are really coming a little more upscale. And it's, it's really, you know, becoming more gentrified probably than we need to have it. How can I help you? Um, it is skipping. That's skipping. Okay. Uh, which one was that? This is, uh... I think this place could be a landmark. If everybody tries to do something about it. You know, I just hate when people come say, oh, when are you closing? Oh, can I take a photograph of the place? It's like pissing on my grave. Or actually, Bob's grave, you know, our grave, basically. Yeah. Just coming in, you know, buying anything. Oh, yeah, I'm going to miss this place. When was the last time you came you here? Oh, about like 20 years ago. Oh, too bad it's going out of business. Well, you're not coming around and buying records anymore. I don't see your kids if you have any. No wonder it's going out of business. Besides, you know, the landlords in New York City with their ridiculous rents. I see boys and girls if you live wherever you live and you want to come. New York City and live 
You better make sure you get it. You have an amount of this, a wad of cash, mula, because it'll eat you up and it'll chew you up and spit you out in a minute. So, I mean, it's not the same in New York, Bob Dylan and John Baez. <laughs> but, hey, you're in for a surprise if you're not tough enough. Still a tough city. Only the strong survives. <laughs> Tell me about these rulings. Uh, the, the box. John DeSalvo, I definitely think um, his mind is just all about music, you know, and I, I do think that John would be there. He would, he would do it. He would go with us. He would move to the new location. How long do you work here? Uh, about 25 years. Oh my God. So would I go? Do I want to go? Should we go? Those are like the questions that I'm constantly thinking about what would Bob do, and I don't know. I don't really know if Bob would relocate. We're all a lot older, um, and everybody's losing. Like I said, it's a labor of love. Nobody gets paid anything. The rent is too high. We we take record collections for people for like ten dollars because we really can't afford to even buy records. Oh, and I think for Chris who really has run the shop ever since Bob got ill. I mean, Chris really came in, and he sacrificed a lot to keep that shop open. It's like if he doesn't want to go full-heartedly... And there you go. Thanks. I really then hesitate about making a move at all. Maybe I should just quit, you know, you know, stop where we started and let that be the beauty of it. Well, Chris is, a, he's always been a really great friend and he's, he's been there with, with Bob's illness from day one. Um, but he's a character, you know, he's very sarcastic. He's sort of like a leftover of what Bob's sarcasm is. Just, he's not as funny. You know, or he's not as charming as Bob uh, could be. Just line up. See what I mean? Like, they could say one word to Chris about what they're looking for. He knows what it is. Do you know that about yourself, Chris, that you have, like, good musical, you know, every, like, somebody will ask something, you know exactly what it is? No, I didn't know that. Yes. I thought he was talking about <laughs> oh, I, I know who <laughs> Um, I sometimes think Chris is always waiting for me just to come in and say, okay, show's over, close up the shop. Like he's like, he almost like he needs to be told that, you know. But how would a store run without Chris in it? It probably wouldn't run <laughs> at all. 760. No, that's a, no, you're not interrupting anything. Oh, no, you're not interrupting anything. No, it's okay. No, this is a business here. Okay. Yeah, 760. Would you like a bag? Oh, yes, thank you. And um, so Chris was, you know, was a real nice guy, you know, and Bob and I liked him right away, and we hired him. And uh, and between the two of us, he's, he's been with us ever since, you know, in some shape or form. For him to uh, to be running the store all these years, I mean, he he actually had no choice. Somebody had to be the, the head. And, and, and uh, he was more than qualified to step into Bob's position. And uh, Bob was lucky to have him. What happened was, as the story goes, is Bob, was, Bob got up that morning in August of 2001. He was walking his dog, Mel, and a man upstairs in the complex where Bob lived, he had a, an apartment, was watering his plants, and he saw Bob grab a tree and fall to the ground. Bob went into Cedar sinai Hospital, it was 2001, with a major brain aneurysm bleed. And there were so many people calling from the stores. It was just like completely chaotic. It was like, you know, like the king is, is not around and nobody knows what to do. Um, but Bob's illness it, it was major. It was something that he was never going to bounce back. And then I remember about maybe eight months being back in New York and um, he just was so sick and his blood counts were bad and he was losing weight. And... Um, I was just so tired and so drained. Like, and I, I, I didn't know if I should fight anymore, that maybe 
the old Bob, I should just let him go and just, and I think that was the hardest moment in his illness. And I remember calling up my mother and she said, you know, Jennifer, maybe he just needs to let, you need to let go. And it was just like, you know, I get emotional thinking of that because it was like that point where you say, should I let this person go? Because I just thought, you know, he's so wonderful. I, I thought he deserved, you know, a chance. But yet I was wondering if I was reading the signals wrong that maybe I was fighting too hard for Bob and that maybe it was his time to go. But when my mother said it, it was like, wow, maybe this is it. He's on heart. People are going to say, does he sing? And then, you know, they want to. Hold on. Here's a Sharpie for that. It's all right. Same thing. And then just put the date on it so they know. See, his first album came out in 1962. If someone else here wants to keep it going, fine. I, I don't want to. I shouldn't be in two places. I, I should focus more on this house that I inherited and get that repaired and sell it if I have to. I am not much more interested in the music anymore. I, I've reached the point where I don't listen to anything. Hopefully we'll be in a new location and it'll be the same junky place. That's what people like. They come in here expecting it to look like a uh, looks like a very lived-in store and uh, we like it that way too. Maybe we'll keep this. <laughs> it's been working for so long. <laughs> we don't like technology. <laughs> we, we, we want the old stuff. It's like us. O old and ready to retire. <coughs> but hopefully uh, we'll be able to keep this going. Because after all the history, it should keep going. It wouldn't be so hard to keep it going if you can keep up with the times. You know, life is about change, progress, moving on. Uh, because if you don't move on, you get stuck and everybody just steps on you. You know what I mean? Ah, yeah, good. If I show you a picture of this place, it sort of looks exactly the same as it did in 83, 84, 85. This, come on. You go to other record stores, they, they completely modernize. They have the laser thing, I call it the laser gun. They scan the barcode. You know, automatically goes into the da database and tells you what they sold, how many, how many units they sold, and if they need to restock. Okay, that we need, that we need. There's another record. So that, that's actually one, one thing, you know. They refuse to change with the times. You have to change. I have regrets constantly about everything. I look at everything negatively. I don't remember anything good, just bad things generally. Yeah, if, if I devoted all my time to the store, like all of it, and if I had perhaps learned computers, and if I was more a sociable person, and if I networked, if I went out and I knew a whole bunch of people, if I was more like Bob, but I'm not, so it, uh, if he were uh, still able to have all his facilities, I'm sure he would have been able to uh, keep this going. So I'll probably take this one to the nursing home because he hasn't had that one there for a while. And those colors are nice. So I pretty much, you know, I, I get stuff together. I'm always transporting a lot of stuff from here in the nursing home. When I was at the nursing home yesterday to 9.30, I was like, I kind of live there and I live here.
And I, I really have given it all up. I, I, I gave up the best years of my life. You know, my 30s, I just, it, there was no, but there was no question. It didn't feel like a sacrifice. And I have to speak to the doctors today because they put him on um, two medicines that I don't really agree with. So I'm kind of eager to speak to Geraldine, his doctor. Um, and then I usually check the fridge to see if there's anything I can bring him. Even when I would take Bob to certain caregiver meetings, you know, it would be like all these old women, you know, older women, I should say. And then there I was. And they would say, are you the daughter? No. Are you the this? No. I'm his girlfriend. I have his shirts, which I'm looking forward to giving him his shirts. So. Yes, there were times where I could be very resentful and angry. And, and wonder, did I do the right thing? What is it that I could have been like if I didn't care for him all of those years? But it's weird because I just couldn't, I, I actually feel like I was on the right road. To work with Bob, I tell you, he, ha he was very moody. He had his moods. Our friendship started to fade as it went along, and, and he, uh, I saw him becoming nastier and nastier. He wasn't, he wasn't a Mr. Nice Guy anymore. Not to me, anyway. You know, he was unpredictable in my eyes. I told him, uh, I said, Bob, I said, uh, uh, I'm not signing any more leases with you. I said, the lease is up over here. And I said, I'm not moving either. I'm not looking for another store. I said, we don't get along, and it's much better that we both have our own places, and this way you could scream at anybody you want and throw any, anybody you want out of the store, throw them down the stairs. It won't bother me. When I first walked in and I first confronted Bob, who kicked me out right away. I think he fired me, like, maybe the next month. No, I never got chased with a baseball bat, but I got thrown out a few times. And I think he fired me again sometime after that. I came in again. Banned for life, except for the next time I came in and wanted to spend money. I want to be a businessman. I'll ride the train every day. I'll be a real executive. I'll do everything my way. I want to be a businessman. Um, you want Tylenol? You don't, do you feel like you need a Tylenol? No? Alright. You know what, I don't think you need a Tylenol either. How you been feeling lately? Lousy. Why? I'm at the, the stage in my life where I think it's, it's got to be right on. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm worried. Why are you worried? The kid is the new, anybody new working for me that is the what they're expecting to do. Well, Chris will take care of that. You know, all right, then me too. And you too. And you know, it's great owning the store, and it's great to be an owner. They sit back, do nothing, and let the store take care of itself. But there's also a lot of work into that. But you can't worry about it all the time. I never did. No, you used to worry about it all the time. Remember, you used to pick me up and that's, we used to just drive around the block and you'd see house business, house business. So you, you, that's, that's also why I think you were stressed a lot. Because you had too much going on and you didn't take care of your health. I'm not picking on you, I'm just saying. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Already. That one I know we have a whole section for him. Okie doke. We have it just put in the front down in the room. Okie doke. And I'm free from all torture. house in 1947. 
I believe it was built around 1855. Most of the work over the years my father did on it. They are all of my parents here. The garden was much nicer than there was no garden in the back there. They had plants and big pots of geraniums and I haven't even looked at them in years. When you like something and you listen to it and you evolve with it, then the time for that passes. It's all tied into other things, like other people at the time, whether they liked it, whether you felt part of a community with like-minded people or someone you knew liked it. And it's, it gets very subjective. And if the time and the circumstances pass, then then uh, then the just the time for the item passes too. So what would you like to see happen to your store? I'm very happy with my store. You're very happy with it? Mm -hmm. Is it is it the force that helps you to keep getting better every day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It gives me something to, to, to reflect on mm -hmm. myself. Yourself. We're we're trying to understand where the store is going, and I don't want to say to you that the store is closing, because that would break my heart to tell you that. Because I could see how much encouragement it gives you to get better, and it's who you are. You're proud of what you what you opened and what you accomplished. It means a lot. To I'm not gonna close. So don't worry about it. All right. But the rent is very high, and people don't go out and buy records like they used to. They will. How? It's get get a record. Do I tell them they need? They need. <laughs> and whatever takes over the store has to be someone like me. Well, that's it. Somebody like you. Mm -hmm. So can I clone you? Mm -hmm. I brought other photos. I was actually trying to see if I had... You must have liked your looks because you blew it up into a, a large photo with your hippie hair. Let me see if you look the same. Mm -hmm. give, me the, give me the look. Chin down. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> you did it really well, by the way. How old were you in this photo? 17, 18. Oh my, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. <sighs> what? You want to see these? Ooh. So I, don't, I, I know that Bob's not a big fan of anyone continuing the record shop aside from Chris or John that I know I also found photos of when Bob first got sick how bad he was I don't even like to show them to him but this is like years and years ago he was really what is it you got sick in 2001 amazing how you know how much we've been through trying to get you better and better mm -hmm. how much how hard you've worked at that mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it <laughs> you remember how we met I came into the record shop he said I had boobies like mosquito bites I called you old man. What was our first date? Where did we go? I hope you remember. 
Uh, I'll give you a clue. It's up in Harlem. Yeah, I know. And they sell? Pizza. Mm-hmm. Patsy's Pizza? Mm-hmm. And you threw a slice at me and you said, try this. We, we were together nonstop after that day. You know that? We would fight as hard as we would love. Did we? Did I give you a hard time? Yeah, I did. Why? Probably because I loved you so much. You're a good guy. You're a good guy, Charlie Brown. never going to be another record store like Gleek or Bob's. That's done with. And then I say, well, do people realize then what's happening to your neighborhood? Then you're just becoming a, ro a, a rotation of just whoever can pay it. Like everything, um, it will fade into the memories of just the people that remember it. And for the next generation, it will never exist for them. It's like that flicker of light, and like Bob's store is like, like the last of the. Okay, now the light's gone. And now this time is catching up with me. It seems each side I pass by holds a mystery. When the red was blue, we had no choice. So that red guitar in the village voice, and we just went by, but we still. Leave when it was our time There's a Chinese place that we love to go In the winter time Jammin' through the snow And the day be over Before we know when it was our time I almost made the call But maybe it's a crime I should have spoken up back When it was our time I should have spoken up back When it was our time I should have spoken up that when it was our time.